beautiful souls. I'm sharing the tutorial today on how I made the interactive shadow gift box. And we'll be essentially making two boxes. One is going to go on top. It's like stacking boxes together. So let's do the measurements and the scoring line for the bottom part. Okay, so this is the lid and this is the bottom. This is the gift box where you will be storing your gifts or your crafty supplies. So to start off, you're going to need heavyweight cardstock. This is a 110 pound cardstock. It has a really nice um, heavy weight to it. And you're going to need two cut at eight and a half by ten and a half. And I have to write the measurements here because they're both going to be scored differently. But you're going to need two again at eight and a half by ten and a half. For one of them, you will score at one and a half on all four sides. Okay, so you see my scoring lines here. That is scored at one and a half on all four sides. For the second one, you're going to score that one at one and three eighths on all four sides. And I want to keep, um, especially where I have it written, the score lines the measurements for the score lines I want to keep it here so that I know this is going to be your bottom the one that scored at one and a half and this is going to be your lid the one that scored at one and three eighths for the shadow box you're going to cut one at seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters and it's going to be scored at one inch on all four sides for the second one, this, this is going to be your lid. Make sure you write that down. One is for the lid and one is for the bottom where you're going to put your elements for the shadow box. This one will be cut at seven and seven eighths by 10 inches. These measurements look kind of weird, but it actually works. So when I first did it, I thought I made a mistake and it actually worked in my favor. So this is going to work in our favor, these measurements. It kind of looks a little bit weird, but trust me, it's going to work. <laughs> so um, did I mention you're going to score this also at one inch? Okay. The next step is we're going to cut into this score line and what I like to do is cut out there's a um there's a dip in that score line and I like to trim that dip out so this is what I do I cut along one side of it uh, next um, up to this score line the next score line and then I cut on the other side of that dip right right on the edges and I cut a little bit into the next score line um, because that gives it more of a flush look when we assemble. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and actually fold this way. Fold all of them in, and then when you add your glue to these parts and you align it, it gives it more of a flush look, okay? So for this bottom, what I like to do first is I like to add my layers, um, my decorative papers. So I'm going to add it to here and to here only. So on the long sides, here, here, and here. I'm not going to add them here because we have to um, glue this here first. And then we add our decorative paper in here to cover those flaps. 
and I would wa I want to mention that we're doing the bottom. This is the part where you're going to house your gifts, okay? So that is the bottom, and I did label it bottom. This is the one that scored at one and a half. Okay, so here, as you can see, I added the designer paper to these parts like I suggested. And then to the back and all the four sides. Now we're just going to add adhesive to these parts. I already added it to here. I'm just going to glue that in place. You're going to do that for this side. And once you have that done, then you can go ahead and add the layer to cover those um, tabs. Okay, now that we have the bottom box together, we're going to do the lid. And the funny thing is that we're not going to totally assemble the lid. And you'll see why. But we are going to layer um, some of the papers. Not all of them, but some of them. And you'll see why for that as well. Now here, uh, the paper didn't quite reach all the way up here, which is fine because I'm going to add another decorative piece all around here um, to make the box fit even better. And what that does too is that it makes it a lot sturdier as well. So if we start off with a sturdy cardstock which is the box and then we start layering and makes it even a lot sturdier which you know which is what we want especially if we're going to use it to store um, crafty goodies or um, you know supplies we want to make sure that it's sturdy okay so there we have it okay so now we have the lid layered only here here and here and we're not going to do anything to here, okay? The next step we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom of the shadow box. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and layer that. Um, again, only these three. And that's it. We're, we're not even going to layer this. So this is going to be the next step. So again, take the bottom of your shadow box. This is the part that you're going to add all your elements to. This is the one that's seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. So just layer again only this side, this side, and this side. That's it. So we have the bottom to the shadow box layered, like I said, here, here, and here and there is a little space here um, so when I resize this it's perfect here but it gives me a little bit of space here but that's going to be re remedied and we'll talk about that later now here is the lid to the gift box that we flip over this gets glued right in here that's going to get glued there so essentially, you're stacking the boxes. So this is the gift box, and this is the shadow box. So that just gets glued there. Okay, so carefully, um, when you, and I highly suggest wet glue, um, you know, like a, not a runny one, but a tacky glue or something like that so that we have time. So we'll just move these parts in like this, and we'll try to align the score line here to the score line on the bottom right and then we're just going to open this up quickly and then move this and maybe move this a little bit see this is why we need the wet glue and that's pretty much perfect there and then you just go ahead and glue it so down this is wide in and it's centered within the the inside of the lid as you can see Okay, and this is why we don't add layers to here yet because and then if we add a layer here and a layer here, we, we're going to see the seam and we want to clean that off nice with a um, wide strip of um, designer paper. Okay, so I don't actually create this box yet until 
I add my dimensional layers in here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to share with you how I attached the house to here um, by hinging it. However, I'm not actually going to do that. I'm, I want to do it the way I originally wanted, which is to remove the house completely and then have it put back in, you know, with magnets. Since it's going to have mag magnets anyway, I don't need to hinge it. You don't need to do that either. So this space here um, was actually in my favor, in our favor. So what I did was, um, this is the piece that I'm actually going to glue here and glue here once I um, put this together like that okay but I am gonna glue that I am going to glue only this part here because when I add my layers um, this already needs to be in, in place but I'm not gonna glue this down yet until the tabs are glued in place and then I can go ahead and glue that down to hide those tabs. So to do the hinge you're going to take your piece of paper and I don't know if you're going to have a space like I do but this worked in my favor and it might work in yours depends on what you're doing. Um, and then I added another score line here and created like a gusset right so then we have this thing going on here like that okay and then I would go ahead and glue this down like this glue that in place and then on this part here I would add the um, I would add the house However, I would add the how the silhouette back here first. But what I also did, I forgot to mention, what I also did was wherever the house was, I actually trimmed these extra layers off. Okay, so I would add the 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 the, the silhouette of the house back here. <clears throat> and then I would add the layer on top and that would be dimensional the house with the with the intricate cuts that's going to be dimensional and that's going to go right on top of that silhouette that's how I did it and then wherever I put the magnets here because I would have this done first before I actually do the house so the, there's going to be a magnet here and a magnet here so wherever that was then I can go ahead and add those magnets to the back of the layers and then once that was done I would go ahead and glue this down first and then I would only glue this part here to here and then we would have the functional house that's hinged and it would do this so that's how I actually did it but I'm not doing that for here <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and add my layers okay so I did all my layering I didn't want to show that um, because uh, you might not have the same papers or the same dies that I did so I went ahead and built the house using the Anna Griffin holiday house die set which is this one here okay and I cut everything out and I layered it up and I did all of that and and this is what I wanted to achieve where this completely comes out instead of having it hinged this way and I could go ahead and decorate the back this is a die that I have in my stash it's a no-name brand die okay so I use that for back here I could have easily turned this like into a card which would have been even nicer but that's okay because um, you know I'm not gonna be opening this up all the time so it is magnetized the magnet is here and here and wherever these magnets are they're placed here uh, so 
it can all align in place and this won't move anywhere so if i have it up like this for display it's not going to move forward or a rock from side to side okay so now we can assemble the box so we're gonna have glue our you know what i'm gonna do this one first because of this part here just add your adhesion here adhesion adhesive add your adhesive and adhere it you know what i mean you know what i mean i have allergies guys so i sound really funny but it is what it is and i'm gonna line that flush here i'm gonna line that flush here you know what I think the smart thing to do is to also add your glue here as well for this you can use a double-sided tape okay now I'm gonna do this this and just glue everything all together how simple was that right super duper simple And if I miss some spots, I'm just going to go ahead and add. Oh, we do have to add glue here. So add your glue here too, to the tabs here on the inside before you actually close everything up. This is why I say to wash the whole thing in case I make boo-boos. There we go. Look at that floor of the ground. I love that. That pebble brick look or stone. So pretty. And then just add your adhesion here and here. And glue that in place. And then go ahead and add your layers. That layer is going to go there. Okay. And then when you have all of this together, then you can go ahead and glue this and finally create the box here. And everything is going to be intact. And when you've done that, then of course add your layer and to finish it off. The box is now assembled, the shadow box and the lid for the gift box. And I will be adding a strip here of decorative paper to cover the seam. I'm also going to add another decorative layer so that um, it has a nice fit. This is the bottom, of course. And this has a little bit of wiggle room. You guys already know I'm not really good with fractions. So um, I'd rather it be a, bigger or a little bit bigger than it being too small or not fit at all because we could always add layers here you know to fit um, this is an opportunity to have a nice decorative layer here so that this will have a nicer fit this is our lid this is the inside of our lid and I did attach the layers here this is permanent this one however is not permanent um so if you have repositional tape or um washi tape or whatever so you can tape the edges down because we're going to cut this at the same time we're going to cut this this one this is the top the cover and this is permanently fixed this is glued down completely and what i did was i cut myself a template of five by seven and a half and I just centered it as much as I could and I traced it with a pencil. So now I'm going to be cutting this out with an X-Acto knife. So this whole middle part is going to be completely out. And I cut out an acetate sheet that's going to go on the inside. We need a full sheet of this. I just cut it out the same size of this paper. And that's going to 
this going to be adhered with double-sided tape just on the edges of course because we're not going to have a middle anyway right so let's go ahead and cut this out cut it out with an exacto knife together I have the layers in here I have this layer if you add an image on the window that'll be like your really first layer and that'll give it even more dimension to everything else in the box so there you have it Okay, just go ahead and add your layers. If you want to, if you're better at math than I am, <laughs> um, you know, and you can make those adjustments where if you want the box to actually fit, where you don't have to add extra layers, go, go ahead and do so. Um, and for the window, if you have like a die around that size, a rectangle die, go ahead and use that. Um, I'm not sure if I had one. I was just not motivated to go look for one to see if I had one in my stash. But if you do use it, even if it's a little bit smaller than this, a little bit bigger is fine. But I would suggest no more than that, you know, because you don't want it to be um, flimsy. Especially when you're trying to glue on that layer in the inside. Okay, so that's, there you have it. That's pretty much it. Let me know if you actually make it and you adjust the measurements. We'd like to know that. I would love to see pictures if you have um, different scenery going on in there. We'd love to see that. So everybody, take good care of yourselves. Have an enjoyable day. If you're unable to, please don't go messing up anybody else's. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Let's share, be fair, be filled with love and love one another. Take good care, everybody.